Again, let's take a look at a heavy duty truck engine. Most of how this engine is configured is known prior to ordering the specific engine. You take a manufacturer like Freightliner or a manufacturer like International. If they're going to purchase an engine from Cummins, they're going to already have designed that engine to fit within their chassis. So 90% of how the engine itself is configured is the same. Um, we all know where it's going to sit, where the engine mounts are located, what the front engine adaptation looks like, where the exhaust ports are, everything really that is unique to that, that OEM is already configured into this engine. However, based on customer requirements, you're going to have a variability in the engine that's ordered. The heavy duty truck in industry is, is unique in its applications, so you're going to have all sorts of different horsepower, different torque ratings, which are controlled electroni electronically. However, this is important because once it's set by the OEM, it can't be changed, so it is a configurable option. Um, you can only change it with a, you know, in the field by, with the OEM with an electronic EEPROM device. One thing you can't change is how you're going to hook it up to a transmission because the whole rear of the engine is actually unique in different parts content based on what transmission you're going to hook up to it. So if you're going to hook an automatic transmission up to it, it's obviously different than if you're going to hook up a manual transmission. This variability happens all the time. I've seen you know the same engine ordered for a thousand different trucks. I've also seen a thousand different engines ordered with 900 different configurations, but it all goes in the same truck. Um, it's a reality of how this industry works and you know how these engines are ordered. Okay, just copy the quote. One could argue that you know you could use standard Oracle and you can just configure a product, copy the quote, reconfigure the minor changes. Agreed, uh, but this becomes kind of tedious as well. You have to configure every line. You're still answering the same questions for each one. Uh, you still have to, depending on the navigation of the UI, you're going to have to run through multiple screens if it's set up that way. It's a obviously vanilla Oracle solution, but what if you had different requirements? Let's take a look at a real world example. A client is a manufacturer of gaming devices. They basically are slot machines. The games are almost always bought in groups and these groups of games are going to typically go to the same casino. 90% of the game is the same for the group. So all of the peripheral components, um, what bill acceptor am I going to use? What type of uh, player tracking system am I going to use? What type of laminate is on the outside to match the decor of the casino? All of that stuff is the same for every single game. However, the manufacturer offers multiple different themes and each of these themes has different artwork related to it and different software that needs to be loaded to the game. Let's look at this business process. All options that are required to price the game are answered initially. So in order for the account executive to generate a quote he's going to select 50 games and all of the 50 games are going to have the same components that we discussed earlier. Based on this information we can generate a quote for those 50 games. Once the quotes reviewed and you know POs issued then typically what happens is it's determined what themes the games are going to be delivered with. It's conceivable that you could take all 50 of those games and have 50 unique themes with unique parts associated with them.
The end users of the configurator UI needed to be able to split the order in the runtime session. This was a unique requirement. And the end users also invoked the configurator runtime model from a custom portal. So what they wanted to do is basically split the order up while in the runtime engine and then upon exit of the model have all of those splits be visible on the order lines or be available on the order lines. The product structure or the bill of material was a configured order model at the top level. This consisted of a PTO model and an ATO model for the main assembly, basically the video game or real game, whatever you want to call it, an ATO model for the software itself, and a PTO model for the marquee assembly that goes on top if desired. The solution we used a non-BOM component to track the configuration header, the revision number, and the split quantity. We populated these values using a configurator extension. Once the order was entered and booked, we used a PLSQL procedure to gather information about the split configurations from the CZ tables. And using this information, we called the standard API to create the new order lines.